2 Kings chapter 17. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, that's south, began Hosea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria, that's north, over Israel nine years. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as the north does in Israel, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. He is a little better. Against him came up Shalom. Oh, wait a minute, Shalmezer, I hate when they do cross over to the next column, Shalmezer, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant and gave him presents, bribery, <laughs> be my friend. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, that So is not So for, it's the name So, and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Well, look at that. Year by year, he's been paying off the Assyrian. It's called tribute. Please don't attack me. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Hosea has gone to prison. The king. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land of Israel and went up to Samaria, and he besieged it three years. Here's another besiegement of Samaria for their sins. In the ninth year, Hosea, the king of Assyria, took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Havar by the river Gozen in the cities of Medes. Now, I don't know how you write your Bible. I don't know how you mark your Bible. I don't know what you do. But right there, put a line, put something. Because as of B.C. 722, Israel North is now going to captivity, and they have never, never gone back yet. Manasseh, the half-tribe Manasseh, Dan, uh, no, Gad, and e, uh, Reuben have already gone into captivity. The nation on the other side of the Jordan River. Now here's Israel. They're gone. They've been taken away. The reign of Hosea by Assyria. And this is the area where Jesus would walk, talk, and live. North. And they've never gone back. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and ha had fear other gods. Now we're going to get into the, what caused God to say to Israel, you're out. I've had it. I'm done. Cup is full. And the loving God at times to a point, if you do not get right, if you do not repent, if you do not, that's it. You're done. You're gone. God is long suffering, but that long suffering does not add more, more years if you choose not to get right. Grace and mercy of God can end. Talk to the people who are in hell today. And walked in the statues of the heathen. Jeremiah told us one of the statues, one of the ways of the heathen, is to go get a tree and you, you, you tie it down, you nail it down, you decorate it with silver and gold. Whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. They were in the land, but the children of Israel did not cast them all out. Joshua and Judges. And of the king of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against their God. Secret Santa, secret sister. Shh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell the pastor we're going to have a surprise birthday party for him. You be quiet. Don't tell anybody. There it is. There it is. People don't like me preaching like that. We're not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all, this, all their cities. So every city had a high place, maybe with a cross on top of it or some kind of dome or tower. From the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. There are these steeple tops. 
There were the, listen, those steeples are a image of the heathen of the male part. The penis. When a church has a steeple, according to the history, that's the male penis. That's the Christmas tree, the male penis. Christ, the disciples, the apostles, the book of Acts did not have churches with steeples. That was brought on with the church with much marriage and intervening into the Catholic church, into the church. It would be launch towers. It would be towers. It would be like those men in the book of Genesis. Let's get to heaven, not God. Let's get to heaven. Let's build a tower. Let's do it by our own works. Not of works, least any man boasts. Look where our rover went. Look at the planets. Look at the pictures of the solar system we're getting from the technology we've gotten by us and not by God. And they set them and they set them up images. Ooh. Man, God's been against images ever since Exodus 20. Something wrong with images. See, God made man Adam in the image. Adam's sons were in his image. And we draw great pictures of how great we are. Posters, magazines, movies, theaters, sports cars. And grew, groves, excuse me, groves, groves. Every Catholic church has a grove. It's a bundle of trees with an idol in the middle. In every high hill, got to get a little higher to God. And under every green tree, shape the trees, druid worship. And again, when you go into Baptist churches, what do you see? You see artificial trees. That angers God. What do you need trees in a church house for? I have not found one church that did not have artificial trees in it. Now, if you're outside in a pavilion, you got Bible study and all that, there are trees around there, but that's God's nature. Why are there trees inside of a church house when God says every green tree? And there's some where you go up to the altar and you pray, and there's a tree right there. You're under it. When you got a Christmas tree, you pray to the Christmas tree to bring the presents out. Oh, thank you, tree and Santa, for bringing the presents. And they burnt incense in all high places. So a high place was not only just a high place to have a picnic, but they're burning and they're worshiping and they're serving gods. They're looking at the stars, the host of heaven, the Bible calls it. As did the heathen. So they're doing the heathen practice. It's just not, hey, let's just go on a high hill and sit here and have a picnic again. Or let's go show, you know, bring your children and say, you know, children, you know, that star up there, that's the North Star. In a few moments, we're going to see, you know, the planet and show astronomy. It's the worship of them. According to the heathen. So they're doing heathen practices. They're not doing Jewish practices of God whom the Lord carried away before them. So what the Lord carried the Gentiles out of the land, the Jews are doing, and it's come to the point that says, God, I got to pull you out now. Because if I don't pull you out for what the heathen did, and I got rid of them, I will have to apologize to the heathen for pulling them out if I don't pull you out. And America is following the steps. England is following the steps. And Germany is following these steps. And if he does not pass judgment upon Germany, if he does not pass the judgment onto England, if he does not pass the judgment upon America, he will have to apologize to the Israelites of Israel North, of the Judu Judunian, Ju Judah of the South, that will soon go into captivity, that will be driven out of the land by the Babylonians. He, <coughs> he would have to apologize to the heathen that were in this land before the Jews, if he does not drive out these nations because America, England, and Germany, and other nations follow as such. And if you want to know what's going to happen to America, she keeps on continuing the way she's doing. Israel North, you're going out of the land. This will not be your land no more. And we'll see it with Judah too. England is a mark to America. Do not change your Bible. Do not go against God. Do not allow the religions. 
England is already now in the place where Israel North is. America should be looking at England and say, oh, we better not do that. It's Bible. It's biblical. It's right. Which the Lord carried away before them and brought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. So God gets angry. That is not your modern liberal God teaching today. For they serve idols. Again, since Exodus 20, God's against those idols, aids the worship. The aids of worship of the Catholic Church is one of the things that Israel done, and God says, I hate it. You made me angry. It's aid to worship. Whereof the Lord had said to them, ye shall not do this thing. You shall not have idols. And yet people go about and have their idols. We're religious idols, we're sport idols, we're actor idols, we're be actresses idols, we're, uh, performance idols, record idols, singing idols, whatever the idols is, car idols. Lord said no. Romans chapter 1. It's not only written to, to Jewish people, it's written to the Gentiles. No idols. Yet we go about with our idols. Yet the Lord testified. Imagine the Lord stepping in the courtroom. I testified against Israel. Now, when you're going to be called in the courtroom, God stands up and says, I am against you. If you are the defendant, I'm the plaintiff. If you are the plaintiff, I'm the defendant. When God stands opposite to you and against your corner, you are in trouble. And against Judah. Now, Judah's been sinning right along with Israel. By all the prophets, God sent prophets, Elijah, Elijah, and others unnamed. And by all the seers, saying, this is what they preach, turn ye from your evil ways. Now, here's the difference from today. Keep my commandments. That's not today. That's not salvation. That's salvation for the Jew under the law. Keep my commandments. And my statutes. That's not for the Christian. According to all the law, we're not under the law. We're under grace. Which I command, commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Now here's a reaction. The warning is chapter 13. Look at that, 13, rebellion. 13 is the warning. Here's the reaction of the people. Notwithstanding. They would not hear. You've been in a public ministry, any kind of public ministry, you know what it means for them not to hear. Oh, they hear you. They get angry with you. They reject you. They try not to hear you. They hear, but they won't hear. I understand by the public ministry what it means to him that has ears, let him hear. I understand that clearly but harden their necks. I see that weekly. Like the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord, their God. Look at Jehovah. You can't say every Jew is saved. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity, nothing, emptiness, and became vain, zeal, nilch, and went after the heathen that were round about them. So instead of chasing God, they chased the heathen ways. They became like the heathen. Brother, that's the Baptist churches today. Some churches, you would have religions walk into the church and they would see nothing new under the sun. Concerning whom the Lord had charged them, that they should not do like them. Listen, the Lord's told the church, that's not good. That's not clean. That's not right. We're right. We're rich. Look how great we are. Woohoo! We don't need God no more. Revelation 3. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images. Look at God. That's twice. And even two calves. There's those calves of Rehoboam. And made a grove and worship all the hosts of heaven. That's the stars, Leo, Virgo, 
Libra, Sagittarius, NASA, International Space Station, all the Russian crafts, all the Indian crafts that go up there. And Sir Bale. There he is. There's, there's Mr. God, bless. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. That's Israel North. Now, we read yesterday, chapter 16, verse 3. But he walked in the ways of the king of Israel and made his son to pass through the fire. Now, we read, that's the first time it shows up in the Bible outside of Deuteronomy 18.10. Here's the first king to be mentioned by name that he is having his son burnt to Molech. But this is not the first king. We learned that the kings of Israel have been doing it. Here is the first king of Judah. Judah is following in the unrighteous, the wickedness of the footprints of Israel. And God's not only going to boot Israel out, he's given a warning to Judah, you better get right. And today that would picture England with the United States. The United States, look at England. They had the King James Bible, 1611. You had the Geneva Bible come over on the Mayflower. America's not getting right. She will fall in the hands of Judah. She will be kicked out like Judah was kicked out. Or God would have to apologize to every person in Judah. And he's not going to do that. He's a righteous God. He causes, uh, his, and here's daughters, not just sons, the daughters, to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments. That potter, which is so widely used in churches today. These are magical terms, divination, enchantment. These are, oh, I, I'm a Christian magician for Jesus. What did God just say? I kicked them out because they're doing that magic. And when Pharaoh called the magicians over to challenge Moses and Aaron and God, the magicians did what they did, and Moses turned his heart away. Divination and enchantment. Oh, we just love the, the, the Potter books. We do little tricks for the children to come to Jesus. That's right. You are in the last phases of Israel. Israel went bye-bye. Why not just the gospel? Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to Scripture. What's wrong with that? People don't like that. They're not going to get crowds. We're not going to get the little children. We're not going to get the kiddies. We're not going to get the parents to come and see the show. <gasps> when did Jesus put a freak show on? Do you see Peter open up a, a, hey, come on, come on, come on, oh, come on, receive Jesus and play in the bounce house. Come on, come on, see our, our virtual women over here, you know, washing your cars with their bathing suits and all that. The world does that. Use divination and enchantments. Hocus pocus, fee fi fo fum. The Catholic Church does that. When the priest says his prayer, magically delicious, that biscuit becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Magic in the church is nothing new. There's been Christ magicians in the church ever since they came up with the mass. He just doesn't wear the big black hat with all the stars, Merlin. And sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord. They sold themselves. They went for the highest bidder of the gods. They gave themselves so they can have people. They can have money. They can proceed. They can have the, look at this church. To provoke him to anger. It made God angry. Let's rattle on the, let's rattle on the Catholics with their images and idols. That makes God angry. So does divination. So does enchantments. And the movies that we send our, our children, who are supposed to be of the Christian, to go see their movies. Them, oh, we're, our family's going down to the magic world of... What's wrong? That angers God. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel. Judgment. 
We had the warning in 13, the reaction 14, 15, 16, 17, the judgment 18. The Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. You know how bad the church is going to get? Get up here. That's it. I have had it. Nothing else I can do. You ain't going to be no more influence to the world. You ain't doing no better. Get up here. It's not like, oh, I just love, you know, that moment. Come to me, dear. I just love you so much. It's that moment when my mom would call me. When my mom called me all three names from her, her, from her window. I'm in trouble. Got to go, guys. Out of their sight. Imagine when God doesn't even want to see you. That's how bad Israel was. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. And we will pick up from Judah. We are done with Israel. There will be no more kings in Israel. And Judah kept not the commandments to look. Judah was supposed to look at her sister in the north and say, Oh my Jehovah. King, did you just see what happened to our sister up north? We got to get to that temple and we got to get right with God before it happens to us. The judgment of God is for others to say, I better not do that. Because if I murder somebody like that guy just got murdered and he went frying in the electric chair, Romans 13 Punishment of God is a, supposed to be deterrent against what we're doing. When we see someone who's down and out in the street because of drugs or alcohol and their life is wasted, we're supposed to look at that man and say, I don't want to be like him. But we say move over because I like to drink. And Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God. So they're no better. But they walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. They're not walking by the law with, with Jerusalem, with the temple. They're walking by Israel. Israel set the standard. That is Jeroboam's golden calf. That is Jezebel's Baal worship. See, they were worshiping Baal. That's Now we are giving our children to Molech. We've got a tree in our living room. We got a tree in our church. Jeremiah will say every street corner has got a, a temple to Baal and Asherah. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. That's Israel. That, that's the one that God loved. That's the one that said, you're my firstborn. Pharaoh, you better let him go. You're not going to let him go. All right, I'm taking every firstborn of your children. And I'm going to drown you in the Red Sea. I love Israel that much. And afflicted them. And delivered them into the hand of spoils. Everybody came and took what they wanted. Robbers and thieves. But it's not robbery. It's not thieves. God called us what? God said, hey, go in there and just take whatever you want. Until he had cast them out of their sin. So they were losing things. A guy would go out to his farm one day, he had 12 cows. He'd go back the next day. He had only eight. And God said, hey, I took away those four. Where will my chickens go? God's like, I, I had someone take them. For he rent Israel from the house of David. And they made Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, king. And Jeroboam dragged Israel from following the Lord. And made them sin a great sin. And there is those golden calves again. It's done. In Israel, the golden calf worship is done. Finally over. Well, why did God allow churches? Why does God allow religions? We're going to look at a moment. Those religions are going to go bye-bye. They will come to an end. And Jesus Christ will be praised. For the children of Israel walked in the sins of Jeroboam, which he did, they departed not from them. This is the first king of Israel. From the king of Israel, the first one, to Hosea, the last king. Those golden calves have been in. 
until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by his by uh, as he said by all his servants the prophets. So God has sent men and women. God has sent street street preachers. God has sent people going knocking on doors. And they look at you, ha, 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 you're a fool. You know, other perverted things they say to it. Hey, just get out of here. Hey, we're just sick and tired. You're going to be here for 45 minutes. You'll be out of here. We don't, blah, 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 blah. One day, God's going to say, the door's closed. The door's closed. And that happens with death. So was Israel carried away out of their own land into Assyria unto this day. Now let's look at the end of religion. Revelation 2.20. Religion may be, but it won't be in the future. Revelation 2.20. Three places to look at. Revelation 2.20. This is the church age. This is Thyatira. 606 to 1520. This is your dark ages in history. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, you remember who she was, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my, my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Well, that's, a, that's a great description of the mass. I gave her a space to repent of her fornication. God gave Israel a place to repent. She repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and then they commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. The, the end of Jezebel reign of a religion will come to an end one day. There will be no more Jezebel religion. Chapter 14, verse 8, Revelation. Chapter 14, verse 8. Now, it's kind of interesting here, in chapter 14, verse 8, Babylon. This is not the church of the Catholics. This Babylon. But when Peter closes his epistle to the church of Babylon, I greet thee, that all of a sudden is the church, Catholic church. And interesting. Verse 8, chapter 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. It's fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Babylon is the source of Baal worship. Babylon is the source of asterisk worship. Babylon is the source of Easter. Babylon is the source of the December 25th child. Babylon is the source of all these re wicked religions. And it's end. It's done one day. Chapter 18, verse 12. Chapter 18, verse 12. All the religions and her, their mother, Mother Church, He cried with a mighty strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become an habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And according to Mark chapter 4, that un those birds are a type of the devil. Well, with those things there, what would be the cage of the devil? An angel came down with a chain in his hand and bound Satan and, and cast the false prophet and the beast into the lake of fire, which burneth forever. The religion may be still bound, but like the religion of Jeroboam, it's done. Listen, witness to them. Tell them about Jesus. If they remain in their religion, they're coming to an end. And their end is a lake of fire that burneth forever. But if they come to Jesus Christ, he that has the Son has everlasting life. Jeroboam's religion has brought a lot of Jews into hell, and they're still in hell today. They're still there. 
about 1,800 years so far. Rough, rough drive. <laughs>